In today's video, we'll learn the seven things you must consider before buying stocks. Never ever buy any stocks without considering these seven things. Number seven, price per share. One reason it is more convenient to evaluate investments in common stock on a price per share basis is that major daily newspapers consistently report this particular data in their stock market quotations. An investor who is considering purchasing 200 shares of pension common stock can quickly determine that if the current price per share is, for example, $30, then his total investment would be $6,000. Number six, total return. This is the basic measure for evaluating common stock. It incorporates the dividend yield and any percentage change in the stock price during the year. The dividend yield is usually expressed as a percentage and is calculated by dividing the dollar amount of the annual dividend by the current market price. For example, if Acme stock pays a dollar two annual dividend per share and sells for $100 per share, the current dividend yield is 2%. Also, if the stock's price during the year increases from $100 to $110 per share, the gain is $10. Or the stock has appreciated by 10% since $10 is 10% of $100. If both of these developments occur, the total return on the Acme stock would be 12%, 2% dividend yield plus 10% capital gains yield. Number five, earnings per share. A company's earnings per share can be calculated by dividing its total earnings by the total number of shares outstanding. Number four, dividends per share. The relationship between a company's total earnings and earnings per share is comparable to the relationship between the total dividend payments made by the company and dividends per share. Total dividends divided by the number of shares outstanding equals dividends per share. Of course, the total dividend payment for individual shareholders equals the firm's dividends per share times the number of shares they own. Suppose, for example, that the Standard Corporation announces in the newspaper that it will return for reinvestment $800,000 of the firm's $1 million net profit for 1990. Then, total dividend payments will be $200,000 total dividends divided by 100,000 outstanding shares. If you own 5,000 shares, you will receive $10,000 in dividends, $2 per share times 10,000 shares. Number three, earnings yield. Even though the stockholder receives only that part of the firm's earnings directly, which is paid as dividends, the portion retained for reinvestment should produce a net benefit for the stockholder when this stock is sold. This means of evaluating stock provides a measure of the rate of return on the stock. Number two, earnings rates. The financial news often highlights an earnings ratio, which is the price per share divided by earnings per share. This ratio is just another way of interpreting the earnings yield. For example, if you buy a stock at $25 per share and the annual earnings are $5 per share, then the earnings yield is found by dividing $5 by $25. This produces an earnings yield of 20%. To find the earnings ratio, you simply convert the 20% to 20 over 100 and use the reciprocal of this figure, which in this case is five. If you could get this same stock for $20 per share with the same earnings of $5, the earnings yield would be 25% and the price that earnings would be four. This shows that a stock with a lower earnings ratio is preferable to a higher one. Lastly, number one, book value. An alternative to evaluating stocks on a per share basis is evaluating stocks based on their book value. Book value is generally defined as a company's net worth, which is its assets minus its liabilities. Interested investors can obtain this information from the company's annual report. The investor does not need to make any computations because the stock's book value amount is usually published along with other key ratios on the company's stock. When choosing stocks to buy, Many investors search for stocks whose book value exceeds their current market price. If the company is dissolved or broken up and sold in separate pieces, these investors feel that their share of the proceeds will exceed the total paid for the stock. Also, suppose it is believed that the high book value of the stock will attract takeover attempts. In that case, investors will believe that the takeover party will pay a premium for all outstanding stock, thus resulting in a tidy profit for current stockholders. Let's now see when to buy and sell stocks and at what price. For many years, stockholders have pondered the right action to be taken when faced with when to buy and sell and at what price. Some have felt vindicated by steadfastly adhering to the so-called value approach pioneered by Benjamin Graham, considered one of the great investment philosophers 
and refined by one of his disciples, Warren Buffett, considered one of America's most successful investors. In brief, this approach means that an investor should buy a stock when it is selling below its book value or balance sheet value and sell when the market price reaches this value or goes above it. This approach has been very successful in some instances, but less than satisfactory in others. For most investors, the common sense approach can always be used with satisfying results, even if the results are unfavorable. In other words, most investors feel that if they are aware of economic, financial, and other developments and adhere to sound logic, they will benefit from their decisions in the stock market unless an accident occurs. An example of the common sense approach would be to hold onto or buy stocks of food and pharmaceutical companies during an economic downturn. Why? Well, most investors feel that people will not go hungry or neglect their health regardless of changes in their finances. Frankly, there is little guidance to be given to a prospective buyer or seller on the right time to buy or sell a particular stock or the price at which to buy or sell the stock. Current prospective owners of stocks are constantly evaluating and reevaluating a firm's prospects to obtain the best possible returns on its stock. As conditions in the domestic and international economies or in a specific industry change over time, a particular firm's stock may become more or less attractive to a particular investor or investors in general. These changes in conditions and evaluations lead to changes in the price investors are ready to pay for a stock. If most investors feel that a particular firm's prospects for future profitability are improving, then the price they are willing to pay for shares in that company will increase. On the other hand, if investors feel that a firm's prospects for future profitability are grim, then the price they are willing to pay for shares in that firm will decline. These changes in conditions and in investors' analyses of the conditions cause stock prices to increase or decrease, and no individual can be assured of forecasting these changes. That's it. If you consider the seven things you have learned in this video before buying any stocks, you can be assured that your investment will be successful. Best of luck.